Hey, Frank, how are you, buddy? Woo! Doing pretty good today, man. How you doing? Doing well, doing well. You know, I got to be honest with you, I'm feeling pretty good about today. I think uh, this is going to be a really exciting show for everyone to watch. I'm excited to do it. <laughs> All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to TD Marketing Lunch and Learn. Thanks for joining us today. My name is Frank Doyle with TD Marketing. Next to me is my partner, Mike Fortanasio. We're going to keep that deli theme going for you today, and we're going to demonstrate how to bake fresh sub rolls in a Moffat convection oven. And my partner, Mike Fortanasio, is going to make dough in a RoboCoop food processor. That's right. I know, that sounds crazy. You probably are saying, hey, did he just say you're going to make dough in a food processor? He sure did. <laughs> yes, I did. Mike's going to show us how to get that done. Why don't you go ahead, Mike, give us a heads up. There we go. We can hang right. my roll there. Yeah. Okay. All right, everybody, this is the Roboku model R602VV, uh, and we're going to show you how uh, we make dough with it today. Um, this multifunction machine not only can slice, dice, shred, grate, julienne cuts, uh, it can uh, chop and puree all your spices and sauces. It can even make dough, like we said. That is completely multifunctional. I can't believe how much it could actually do, Mike. That's right. So the uh, R602VV is powered uh, with a three horsepower motor. So mixing any type of dough is easily accomplished. And it plugs into a standard 115 volt outlet, 5-15. That's great because we know in any kitchen today, finding power anywhere is next to impossible. Actually, 5-20, my mistake. That's okay, no fantastic. So, Still anyhow. What makes it, uh, this unit able to do dough is it has a reverse feature, and that's an exclusive Roboku feature. Um, and they do that by, when they reverse the uh, RPM of the motor, you're using the flat edge of the blade rather than the sharp cutting blade, okay? Uh, and you also have the variable speed control for adjusting your speeds for mixing even the delicatest of, of doughs. Wow, that's great. So, the R602VV 7-quart bowl holds 5 pounds of flour. and It'll mix perfectly in 2 to 4 minutes. Simply load the bowl with the ingredients. Add your water. Mike, you make it look so easy. <laughs> well, it is easy. <laughs> Hit the uh, pulse and on button to activate the reverse feature. And you're ready to go. It's amazing how how little sound this makes. You can hardly hear it running. That's correct. And remember, we're using the standard cutting blade. There's no need to buy any uh, additional accessories or attachments Huge to make savings. this unit mix dough. Um, the reverse feature is exclusive to Roboco. Uh, so again, there's no special blade to purchase. Uh, vegetable prep, puree, chopping, sauces, and dough mixing. The Roboco model uh, R602VV is truly a complete kitchen machine. It's really, like you said earlier, multifunctional. It's incredible what it can do. Yep. And remember, Roboku offers free on-site demos for all of their products. Uh, if you have any client that's interested in a food processor, a VCM, a Blixer, I just came from a Blixer demo, a uh, immersion blender or vegetable juicer, just let us know and we'll uh, schedule an on-site demo. That's so great. So you're saying that our customers don't actually have to purchase the appliance first. We'll actually bring the appliance to them. Correct. And, and we'll do the demonstration at their place. Or make sure that here. they're happy before they make the purchase. Or they can come here to the TD Marketing Test Kitchen and they can certainly try it here. That's right. Oh, wow. Well, that makes the uh, doing business with RoboCoop so easy. One last thing before I have you prep all your dough is, you know, what I'm seeing here personally, I'm, I'm sure our audience is as well, is that it, the footprint of this machine, it doesn't take up a lot of space, Mike. And to me, it looks like uh, smaller than the countertop um, mixer, planetary Absolutely, there is. And because of its multifunction capability, you're using space actually twice. You're doing all your veg prepping, right. your, your purees, and your mixing dough. Wow, that's fantastic space saving uh, solution for any kitchen today. So, so Mike, I'm going to have you go make all your dough and get that prepared to put into the Moffat oven. While you're doing that, is it, I'm going to introduce Moffat to Absolutely. our audience. So, I'm so excited, everyone, to bring to you Moffat convection ovens. Why am I excited? Because Moffitt has thought about just about everything to add into a convection oven. Uh, they've included all the bells and whistles. Moffitt's really known for its space-saving capability, its quality, and its easy cleanability uh, or easy cleaning. So Moffitt is manufactured in New Zealand. 
um, and its North American headquarters is in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. We talked about last week a little bit about the Ollie Group. Moffitt is also owned by the Ollie Group. And the Ollie Group is the world's largest family-owned, privately held manufacturing company worldwide. Uh, over 57 manufacturing facilities and 10,000 employees. So we're really super happy to be a part of the, the Ollie Group. The turbofan series ovens that we see that you see in front of you today have a really fresh contemporary smart design to them. They have a superior look in any front of the house application as well as a robust uh, as, as heavy duty robust features that can tackle any of your harshest conditions in the back of the house kitchen. We're going to demonstrate the E33 D5 oven today. It's on top of a proofer model number P8. I want to explain the model number to y'all just so that you, you, it's easy to find in auto quotes when you go to search for it. It's really simple, everyone. The E stands for electric in the model number. And every one of our model numbers, for the most part, are electric with the exception of one gas oven. You'll hear me say that an awful lot throughout the presentation. The next number is a three, and that stands for a 30 series. If it was a two, it would be your 20 series. After that, the other digit is more for factory use only, so ignore that number for now. Then you go into a D, and the D stands for digital, digital controls. If it was an M, it would be manual controls. And if it was a touch screen, it would be a T for touch screen. And the last number is very important for you when you're writing a spec. The number five means this unit will hold five half size sheet pans or it will hold five 12 by 20 hotel pans. So if there was a four at the end, that would mean it's a four pan number. I think you all kind of get it. It's really simple. So no need to be worried about finding model numbers. Very easy to search in auto quotes. The spacing between our racks are standard, a little over three inches. We have an available four pan slide kit rack that can uh, that you can install and if you needed to get more spacing in between the racks in case you were doing larger baking type products that are gonna rise or, or larger proteins like chickens and turkeys, that kind of thing. I wanna explain a little bit of, well, Moffitt basically has four categories. They have ovens, proof hold cabinets, stands and ventless hoods. Our tw I want to explain the difference now between the 20 series and the 30 series ovens. On your 20 series ovens, everyone, it's going to come standard with a, um, a, uh, a, vented, a safe touch vented drop down door. And that's standard on all of our 20 series ovens. There's options for manual controls or digital controls. Now I'm gonna kind of just give you a rule of thumb when it comes to Moffitt. So if you can remember this, cause I'll keep bringing it up throughout our, our show today. But so you know, and you write this down for your specifications, any ovens, any Moffitt ovens that are 20 amps or over will not come standard with the cord and plug. The cord and plug will be optional. Any ovens under 20 amps will come standard with a cord and plug. So keep that in mind. The, uh, the 20 series will also have um, either the, it will have a stake pool pull handle, but it's a single bar pull handle. And that will either be going, hor that'll be going horizont horizontally, correct. <laughs> so the 30 series is mostly higher kilowatts. Um, so it's gonna give you more power. Um, the, again, they, for the most part, they're not gonna come standard with cord and plugs because they're all gonna be pretty much over 20 amps with the exception of our E31 D4 oven that will have a cord and plug. But always review your specifications just to be careful when you're going into that area. Um, the, the 30 series has an option for digital controls or the touch screen. And all of our 30 series ovens, with the exception of two, and I'll tell you what they are, but all of our 30 series ovens are Energy Star rated. The two ovens that are not is the, are the E31 D4 and the E35 D6. What you're gonna find with Moffitt is that we probably have one of the most broadest product lines in the industry when it comes to convection ovens. We have pretty much every size and every pan configuration to fit all your specification needs. We're gonna demonstrate the E33 D5 oven today. Um, we're gonna talk about the space savings, as I mentioned earlier, that Moffitt's known for space saving. This oven is only 24 inches left to right, 
and 26 and three quarters front to back and just a little over 28 inches high on legs. Our warranty is one year parts and labor from the date of installation. The E33 D5 is 208 volt, single phase, it's 5.8 kilowatts and draws just about 28 amps. Now, 28 amps means I'm over 20, 20 amps, so it's again, cord and plug is gonna be optional. Our pans are loaded front to back versus left to right. And what I mean by that is that we don't go in left to right, which would make our convection oven wider, we go in front to back. However, we're still only 26 and three quarters of an inch deep. So we're still really narrow, uh, both front to back and left to right. Space saving is really important in any commercial kitchen today. A standard convection oven is about 42 inches left to right, a full size convection oven. Our full size convection oven uh, is only 29 inches left to right. So how do we do that everyone? Well, it's pretty simple. I'm gonna start by talking about our fan. I'll open the door. And you'll notice when I open the door, the fan turns off. That's standard. Our fan is located on the right side of the oven versus the rear of the oven. It's a bi-directional fan. And what I mean by that is every two minutes, that fan will go in one direction and then switch and go in the reverse direction. And that gives us really great airflow inside the oven chamber. No need to really rotate the pans, everyone. That's another great feature. That's just another, that, that just takes time for the chef to have to deal with. Now you'll notice that because our fans on the right side, you might say, wow, well, when I'm designing a spec that I have to be really careful what I put next to it. And you do. We don't really recommend that you ever put any um, open burners or fryers directly next to the oven on the right side. Um, however, if you put any type of heat source on the right side, let's just say combi oven or a French top, something like that, we have a really great feature that's available in, uh, as an accessory. It's called a heat shield, and that mounts right on the right-hand side of the oven, and it will protect the oven from any of those grease-laden vapors from getting into the controls. How about we move on to the oven chamber? I'm gonna move over to this side now. The oven chamber has two halogen lights built into the left-hand side. It's a porcelain enameled oven interior with cove corners. And the really great thing, everyone, about that is that it makes it so easy to clean. Uh, porcelain is so super easy just to wipe down and clean. And the coved corners also assist with our airflow movement inside the oven chamber. It also gives us excellent heat recovery versus a stainless steel. The porcelain enameled interior will trap the heat and as we continue to open and close the door, our oven will recover much faster than any other oven out there. We have a continuous door seal, plug-in door seal. And the great thing about the continuous plug-in door seal is that when they wear out, and they do, that's just preventative maintenance. When they wear out, it's not a service call. The chef can actually unplug the door gas, the door seal, and put in a new one. It's really that simple. So let's move on to the door. I'm gonna put my glove on only because um, we've been preheating the oven so we can cook our sub rolls today. I'm gonna start by showing you it's a dual glass pan, glass pane door. And that means it's basically the interior of the door opens up. And why do we do that? Cleanability, and also it allows us to get that venting. So it's a safe touch door. So it's cool on the outside and hot on the inside. It's a really great feature. I don't want to confuse everybody, but I want to be specific to the E33 D5 of it. Before I move on to that, I just want to show you that that um, dual pane glass is standard on our 20 series as well. You can see I can do the same exact thing on the pull down door, which is a great feature. So I'm gonna talk about the door handle. On the E33 D5 oven, this comes standard with the, the pendulum door handle. Um, but on all the other 30 series ovens, you're gonna have the stay cool single bar pull handle. So I just didn't want you to all be confused. We're just using this for the demo purpose. Now this oven also has a slam shut door latch, which is really great. Again, also unique to this oven specifically. So this gives us a good opportunity to talk about moisture injection. 
That's standard on every Moffet oven. It's not an option. It's gonna come with the oven whether you specify it or not. It's up to your chef if they hook it up or choose not to. It does require a water line, but it does not require a drain line. Our humidity levels go from zero to five. And it's not technically by percentage, it's really by seconds. So zero would be completely dry. And then five would be your wettest. And remember, no drain required. So you can actually specify this and design it right into your, the center chef's, uh, right onto a chef's, a chef's table. We'll talk a little bit about programming now. We wanted to make it super user friendly. And we're working obviously with digital controls. This would be digital control over here. And I think I mentioned earlier, this is manual control. This oven has an electronic thermostat and timer. This would be a manual timer and thermostat. <laughs> so our ovens have up to 20 programs and you can, that, you can program the ovens to any way you want. We have three stage cooking capability. Three stage cooking capability, what that does is, stage one could be our sear. So I can set it for 500 degrees for let's say seven minutes and no humidity. So I sear that protein. Then stage two might wanna be a slow wet roast. And I would set that maybe at like 225 for six hours with max humidity. So I'd set it at level five. And then my stage three cooking would be the hold mode. And that would just stay in hold until the chef comes in the next morning and unloads the protein. And that'll stay at about 140 to 160 degrees, depending on how long you want to hold. The another great feature that's standard on this, the 30 series ovens is our core probe cooking capability. Off to the right side of the oven, you'll see there is a connection for an external probe. And when you put the probe in, you would just open the door and then pl plug the probe into the protein. What you'll do is now you're gonna go from cooking by time to cooking by temperature. So you get exactly what you want. And remember, touch screen is available. This is digital, but touch screen is available. So I'm gonna show you now how easy it is to program it. Right now we're just in manual mode. So you can see I'm only at 140 degrees and it's cooking infinity. It doesn't, I haven't set a time. If I wanna set a time, I just simply go timer up. And now it will, and then I would hit start and it'll time down. I can get out of this mode. Okay, and now let's bring it down to zero. Now I'm in infinity mode. And now if I hit start, it'll time up. Very, very simple to do. So I'm gonna stop this now and I'm gonna show you how to actually do a program. Okay, now I'm just gonna hit program. Now it's gonna immediately wanna start this program. So it's going into preheat mode, but I'm gonna trick it. I'm gonna say, hey, no, no, I wanna program it right now. So all I have to do is simply hold in the P button, the program button, and it's gonna give me, right now I'm in program one and I'm in stage one. So if that's where I, that's where I wanna be, I just hit program again. It's gonna tell me I'm, I'm set at 375 degrees. If I wanna go up, I just put the temperature up. If I wanna go down, I just put the temperature down. So now we're at 374 degrees. I, I like that temperature, I hit P. And now my time is here. Right now we're set at seven minutes. If I want to go down, I just go to the negative sign and I bring it down or I go up and I can ha change my time to six minutes. I'm comfortable with that. I hit P. Now it's asking me for my humidity level. So it's set right now at zero, but I don't want it. I want to go up. I want to, I want to inject that steam. So I'm going to go to four and I'm going to confirm that by just pushing the P in. Now it's a two speed fan motor. So we have an opportunity to either stay in high or I can go low and I'm comfortable with low. I hit P to confirm. We also have an alarm. So at the end of your cooking cycle, the alarm can either go on or you don't have to have the alarm. If you want it on, it'll stay on continuously until you come and open the door. So we'll confirm that we don't need it on. I'll 
accept that. And that's my stage one. Now I can go to stage two just by going to the plus sign and I can start all over again with stage two. And I can go to 375, I can change my time. I think you all get the idea. We really made it user friendly on how to do the, how to um, program the unit. So we're gonna just get out of here and I'm gonna, I'm gonna save my program just by holding the program in. Okay, so what's gonna happen now is it's gonna go into preheat. And what'll happen is once it's at the temperature, the desired temperature that you set, it will say ready, RDY across the LED display. And then that's when you load your product. After you load the product, you would simply hit start. We're almost done everyone. I know this is a lot to learn, but I'll tell you, it's super easy. I hope I'm making you see that. So real quick, we'll talk about some options and accessories. Standard um, accessories with Moffitt, we offer stands. And our stands can be mobile or they can be stationary with or without casters. They come standard with pan slides. Or you can double stack the oven, so there's stacking kits available. Also, remember, some ovens come with a cord and plug and some don't. So cord and plugs are optional. Just remember, anything over 20 amps, you have to specify cord and plug. We also have ventless hoods as a great accessory for three models that we offer. We offer that on our E31 D4 and our E32 D5 ovens. That E32 D5 oven is your full size sheet pan. The E31 is half size. Then we also offer the ventless capability on our one gas oven, that G32 D5. So uh, that's available and it's uh, in stock, ready to go whenever you need it. Um, I want to mention the heat shield. That, that's a super great feature that we think should be included on your spec anytime you know that you're going to put uh, any type of hot equipment off to the right hand side. And also the four pan slide runner. In, in case you do need to get more height in between your shelves, you can include the four pan slide runner. Finally, everyone, before we start baking our rolls, we're gonna talk rebates. I won't spend a lot of time on this, but there are some really nice rebates available. As I mentioned, um, on the 30 series, every model we offer is Energy Star with the exception of two models, the E31 D4 and the E35 D6. So keep that in mind. There could be some Energy Star rebates available for you. A really great feature uh, it, right now is with Con Edison and National Grid. So Con Edison and National Grid are offering a $1,000 rebate uh, for anyone that purchases our G32 of it right at the time of the purchase. At, at the checkout counter, they get $1,000 off. Another great feature for this year so far only, they're going to offer an additional $250. So total instant rebate is $1,250 right at the time of the purchase. So keep that in mind, especially when you're dealing with a lot of budgets. Mike, how about we load some, uh, load the oven up and we get some bread to go and some sub rolls in here. Absolutely. All right, let's go. You can just hand them over to me and I'll pop them go. right in. Thanks, Mike. I appreciate it. Now, I already programmed this oven. So I'm going to go to program two. And then uh, I'm going to hit, it's going to preheat and then I'll, I'll hit start. Um, I should have done that before I loaded it. That's my fault, you guys. Um, but I, I did program two. And what I did is I went 3% uh, humidity, or not 3%, but I went on th level three humidity and I went for eight minutes. And that's because I want the humidity because I want that nice golden brown look, that caramelization on the, on the sub rolls. So what will happen is that oven, our oven will automatically spritz water right onto the, the reversible fan. And then that fan will disperse the water throughout the oven cavity. So it'll really give us a nice glaze over our, over our product. So we're gonna cook for eight minutes. Now, factor the instructions from, the, from what I read about cooking sub rolls is I should be baking at 375 for about 15 minutes. Well, I'm going at 350 degrees for eight minutes and I'm introducing wow. moisture. So um, I did a little practicing, so it should come out perfect, Mike. Hopefully it does. So. Perfect, perfect. <laughs> So let's let the oven do what it's got to do, and then we'll come back. Yeah, and you just remember, 48 inches here, we have a whole bake center. That's great. You're right. All right, we'll be right back.
Sure. Wow, look at that. That is that making me hungry. <laughs> you know what? Do you smell that aroma as you open up that door? I do. It's great. If you're in a small deli application, that's going to spread throughout the entire that's, uh, little that's deli. That's an old school so way of doing it. I don't have a glove for you, so um, I'm going to switch here. If you, I'll, I'll get you. Yeah, they can do it like this. This is the thin crust pizza dough. So you can actually, Kyle, oh, that's perfect. You can kind of see how the nice golden brown we got on that. Watch your fingers. Thanks, Mike. This is a thicker crust pizza dough that we did. And that's a great feature too. Sub rolls. And croissants. Thanks, Mike. I appreciate your help. So everyone, that's our show today. I really uh, can't thank you enough, Mike. I, I'm so impressed with what that multifunction uh, RoboCoop food processor, processor can do. And I hope you're as excited as I am about Moffitt and what that does. And don't forget, uh, any RoboCoop products that you have a customer or a client who's interested in a demonstration, uh, just give us a call and uh, we'll set it up and schedule it. Thanks again for joining us for our TD Marketing Lunch and Learn. Next week's episode is going to talk about um, the famous Egg McMuffin that we're going to cook on an Antunis egg cooker. And we're going to do the English muffins on an Antunis muffin toaster. And Mike uh, is going to talk to us all about the slicer and the panini grills. Mike's going to kind of show us the nuts and bolts and how to sharpen the blades and really get into maintaining those types of products. So thanks again. And uh, we'll see you in a couple of weeks, everyone. I'll see you next week, Frank. You got it. <laughs>